another episode of Jay Leno's Garage. With us today is a Porsche 911, but not just any Porsche 911. You may have seen this car if you're at Pebble Beach. It was featured at the Quail. It's been kind of all around the world. You've probably seen videos of it on YouTube. Why is it so special? Let's find out. Let's bring in uh, Rob Dickinson. Rob, come on in. You're the uh, creative director of the Big okay. Honcho over at Singer. And yes. What you guys do is you take 911s and sort of hot rod them, recreate them, how do you say it? I, I Reimagine? Like, yes, I like that term, hot rod. I think yeah. we consider ourselves hot rodders. We wanted to take 911s that were maybe descending into a questionable future, getting, right. getting old and abandoned, and right. try and uh, breathe some new life into them. And the, the essence of this car is to, is to an attempt to locate all those wonderful things about a Porsche 911 right. which have become almost like iconic, like the way it steers, the, the, the handling, and try and optimize everything. Try and turn the volume up a little bit and put it all into one beautifully restored. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure hot rod is the term because I, hot rod to me always means sort of more power than a chassis can handle right. and things of that nature. And that's not the case with this. I mean, obviously a fantastic car to begin with. You start with uh, Cars built primarily what 90 to 94. Is that what it is the air cool was that the um, it was the 964 964 model. model right right and that for us was a great starting point because the chassis at that point was was re-engineered in the late 80s so it was very rigid it had yeah. ABS brakes had a beautiful power steering system had a fantastic 3.6 3 liter engine all great starting points right. of course within four years Porsche abandoned the air-cooled engine and right. moved to the to the water-cooled engine well so perhaps abandoned might be a bit cruel I mean they couldn't it, I don't think anybody could really run an air-cooled engine with emissions exactly. and all that kind of stuff yeah. so uh, I perhaps abandoned might be a bit well, they, 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 get they, out get away they certainly kind of pushed it aside well yeah forward, yeah but, uh, but I mean at the time obviously the modern car is faster but there is something about these air-cooled cars that people love that I love as well and uh, that's a fun thing about Porsche there's always there are the 950 the 356 guys there are the speeds I mean within it there are all these little subsections yeah the thing I like about it is it still looks like a 911 to the uninitiated it would be a 911 that had been obviously been well taken care of but Let's talk about the body first. What have you done? That sense of optimization for, for me was very much, well, the, the, the best chassis that Porsche ever put in an air cooled was the 964 in our view. Right. But the most beautiful body was that original Bootsy Porsche long hood. Right. Old, original, designed in the, the early 60s, which is elegant, functionally beautiful in the way Ferdinand Porsche always insisted things were. There was very, it was no unnecessary embellishment on the car. And we wanted to reintroduce that style um, but in an updated fashion to, to that chassis so we we spent nearly two years clay modeling right. these fenders and certain details of the car to to to, to cover the wheel and tire package right. that the performance was obviously was the original made. car was never this wide well the the turbos were but the yeah. early the early 911s from the early 60s now they were very narrow right hipped, right, right slender hipped cars which which befitted their reasonably uh, low powered engines but um with nearly you know, 350 horsepower in this car, it needs big brakes, it needs big tires. And we wanted to basically put the right wheel and tire and brake package on the car and then just put enough bodywork over the car right. for it to still remain totally authentically Porsche, not look, not look like a hot rod right. in, 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 a, in an overt sense, not put lots of nasty spoilers on the car. We wanted to keep it elegant and, uh, and simple. Well, my favorite thing is, and I lifted up one of these fenders at Pebble Beach, I was surprised at how, what did it weigh, 22 pounds or something? Something like? crazy like something that. Something crazy like that. So the, you've replaced the steel fenders with uh, carbon fiber, correct? Everything is carbon fiber on the car. Wow. Except the doors. We keep the doors steel right. for, for side impact, but we can do carbon doors as well. And how much weight have you taken off the car, do you think? 500 pounds. 500 pounds. That's okay. with a combination of other things, but it's mostly from the mostly from the carbon. As, as, wow. as everyone okay. knows, carbon is a, is a one. So the one whole thing is, uh, this is carbon fiber as well? Yes. So just the doors, okay. Yep. Wow, okay, pretty amazing. Yeah, making stuff is wonderful. Making stuff so it fits beautifully is a whole different yeah, that's ball a, of wax. Yeah, yeah. So we've got that four millimeter panel gaps everywhere. Yeah. It's, we, we go through a lot of trouble to try and make the car as, as exquisitely handcrafted as Porsche would have done in the early 60s. Yeah, I mean, it is beautifully done. There are a lot of people that modify Porsches and most of them are pretty good. This is another level. 
number one, we are the biggest Porsche fans on planet Earth, or we like, I'm sure everybody thinks they are. We, we think we are too. And this is a celebration, a genuine celebration from our little company here of how brilliant and what a and piece yeah. of genius this, this, this design was. You know, this car endured basically incrementally from 63 to 98. You can sure. put the engine from a 1998 Porsche 911 in the chassis immediately in yeah. one day in a right. 1963 911. Yeah, that's right. It's, it's amazing. And I love the fact that people who don't know don't know, and people who know, know. And inside is 911. Yeah. That's what it's Yeah, I mean, there's like nothing that. about this that screams, that look at me, or, you know. Uh, you will never see a valet park one of these. That's, that's what I like. Anybody that has this, parks it themselves. That's my wife and I. If we go to a restaurant, there isn't a parking space in front. We don't eat there. <laughs> that's it. Thank you. We go somewhere. You don't give your car to the valet. And this is a car you would never give to the valet. But let's go over some of the finer points. See, what this car is all about is the finer points. Because initially, it looks like a 911. It's not until you get closer and you realize, oh, boy, that's nicely. Look at that. Oh, that's nicely done. And just the satin finish on the mirror, the wheels. There, our car is about details, for, for sure. And it's, it's very much a Frankenstein car to a degree, because we, although we keep the original engine, matching engine from the chassis, we obviously spend a lot of time and effort on, on, on revamping the engine. But we, we do, we spend that amount of effort everywhere on the car. Um, we worked with uh, up at Sears Point with a company called Olin's that um, sure. specified the, the dampers right. on this car. And um, so I, I guess what I'm trying to say is we spent, although the details are important, making this car work as a homogenous whole was incredibly important to us. And we put us just as much effort into, into worrying about the radiuses here as right. we did into the valving of the dampers. So, I mean, it's maybe that, that makes us a little bit unusual from the normal kind of hot rodding guys that, that maybe where the, the way the car goes down the road isn't that important. Well, this is sort of <coughs> what I call the Gordon Murray philosophy of just make it perfect. I don't care what it costs because this car is very expensive. It's ridiculously expensive. Yeah. And, and, and that was the idea. The, yeah. the, well, it wasn't the idea to be expensive for the sake of it. The idea right. was to be as brilliant as human beings could possibly make a Porsche 911. Right. And that, that, that was the mantra. And, and we sat back and said, well, it's going to be horribly expensive. We're not going to be able to afford it. It can't put off, it can't be a snobby car, you know, right. it can't be a like, oh, this, is, this isn't, I'm a grassroots Porsche guy who's been obsessed with the 911 since I was five, but our car had to appeal to guys like me right. for what we'd done to it, and so we build our own fantasy 911 every time we restore someone's car, and then we give it to them, right. and it's now, an expensive thing. Yeah. I read in some of the blogs that the Stig drove this in, in, uh, on the test track yep. at Dunsford, and uh, it was faster than some of the new cars, correct? It was it's faster than a GT3 RS, which is really? which was very very and faster than a Ferrari 430. Yes, it's it, it, it's a it's a real weapon of a car. I mean, it's yeah. it, the idea was to build something that looked fabulous, that was built like a Rolex, but also was the best air cooled and air cooled 911 you'd ever driven. Let's take a look at the engine compartment. Sure. Well, there you go. That's. Nice and clean, isn't it? Is this the original motor to the car that's been modified? Is it a different motor? Is it a crate motor? What do we have here? No, no, no. This, this, this is the engine that came with the, the chassis. Right. We think that's very important that the numbers match on the, right. on the, on the car. And these engines have generally done around about 150,000, sometimes 200,000. A customer's just bought us his car with 350,000 miles on it. Really? It's been rebuilt twice. Beautiful. I mean, these engines are bulletproof. They're fabulous. And they were obviously strangled a little bit in the early 90s for emissions. Right, they were right. strangled for sound a little bit. They were strangled for all sorts of reasons. So we kind of try and unstra <laughs> unstrangle them. We yeah. worked with Cosworth here in, right. in Torrance down the road. Here in California, anything earlier than 76 doesn't require a smog test, sure. but this you have to, so it would meet smog? We are big fans of CARB, and we're about to enter into some testing for this engine to okay. try and get uh, a, a special executive order on this engine for, for, for smog. But uh, we do, a, we do a, a less extravagant engine, right. um, which is smog legal. So this one's making 350 horsepower. Yeah. Uh, stock, uh, how many liter is it? 3.8. Okay, 3.8. Well, and that's what it had. 3.6 it had. Okay, uh, so, standard, yeah. so that's not crazy. Yeah, so, so we developed the engine with Cosworth, and, and uh, part of our desire was to 
make the engine rev a bit quicker. So we've, we've got we've got some very lightweight internal pistons and cylinders, and, and, and Conrad's Carrillo are making a special lightweight rod for us. And what was the stock horsepower? About 250. 250, and now we're 100 horsepower more. We've, we've found okay. 100 horsepower. We're using the uh, the plenum, the air intake system from a GT3 okay. water-cooled 911, right. which we spend about $5,000 making look very pretty. But this is basically a three hundred dollar part from Porsche. Right. Okay. That's the that's the. And weird, obviously, weird. so you've kept the air conditioning and all of that. Yep. The air conditioning has been uh, rethought and revamped for this car's going to Dubai, so it uh, it needs some good air conditioning. Um, we've got a, a, an excellent uh, uh, fuel injection system from a company called Rothsport out in Seattle. Jeff okay. Gamroth, who's a bit of a genius when it comes to his insight on these engines, and we've got a matching exhaust system on the car, which flatters and and. Uh, Boy, nicely and done. Beautifully done. Let's take a look at the interior of the car. Sure. Obviously a, a vital part of the car and as, right. in, as important as everything else, really. So th this car has our first pair of uh, lightweight carbon fiber race seats. Right. So these, uh, we do two, we offer two different seats on the car. So this is the lightweight version. It saves about 100 pounds okay. <laughs> on, on the other heavy, heavy seats. Let's open the hood up as well. Yeah. This is what you call fanaticism. <laughs> The car was described as a pervert's 911 by somebody, and I think that's good. That's, that's yeah, probably yeah, right. re reasonably fitting. But this, so we, we have we have some uh, fitted luggage. In this fitted, car. Does anybody ever <laughs> use fitted luggage? That to me is the funniest thing. I've got a McLaren F1 that comes with fitted luggage, like I would take a trip and leave my car on the street and go inside with my fitted luggage. It yeah, yeah. It always makes me laugh. It's, it's, but it's all right. You got fitted luggage. Yeah. Well, we got we got some we got some lightweight lightweight you know, carbon luggage. I'm such a sucker for this mid-60s quilting look that was used in by Ferrari and Bizzarini and all of that. Yeah, it's great. I love the center fuel filter. That's a yeah. fuel filler, right? That's fantastic. So we've got, we've got, a, we've got a custom fuel safe fuel cell under right. here, um, so, which is race grade and very safe. Modern headlights. Got hella bi-xenon headlights on right. the car. It was one of, the, one of the, 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 the weak points on the 911s was always the headlights. Right, sure, so we've, sure. we've uprated the, these, were, these lights were developed from the, for the ALMS race series. Um, super lightweight, high and low beam by Xenon light. And how many hours are we talking in this car? 4,000? Yeah, a little over 4,000. We stopped counting at four. Okay. We put our calculators down and said, can we do this as, uh, as a business, even at the crazy, as we talked about the price, the price is high. But what is there's the so much can craziness. You say approximately, what would it cost to do something like this? Well, we, they start, the car start around about at 350. Three, $350,000, okay. And, uh, That's with a donor car. Yeah, that's that. That's and that's with uh, and, and of course from that point the, the owners bring us their cars and then they can select from a whole bunch of crazy. So if I to wanted to save some money, I could delete the fitted luggage. <laughs> okay, I could get rid of the fitted luggage. You I could. don't need that. You could. Okay. It's whimsy. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit of. It's a bit of. Silliness. Oh, look at that! There you are, <laughs> and, but the, and and obviously. Nickel plated uh, and wrapped in uh, the and, finest. And no spare tire, obviously. A bit of tire squirter. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Those, those never work. What do you need for 350? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's just an amazing. You know, it's hard to convey the level of workmanship and craftsmanship in this car. You know, I think it's about time to take this baby for a ride. Well, these are extremely comfortable seats. I sit in a lot of seats like this, and, and boy, they're just awful. Yeah. You know, but this is actually really very nice. What is your red line? About 71? 72. 72. In many ways, maybe this hard car is a little bit hardcore for a daily driven car, but I think a, a 911 needs that kind of duality where you can take yeah. it to the track of the weekend and then take it to work on Monday. Um. Well, initial impression, the first mile and a half, everything extremely light to the touch and extremely precise. You know when you have a good mechanical watch and you turn that mainspring and it just clicks? That's what everything seems to do here. It just sort of clicks in very nicely. Nothing vague about the shifter. Um, it is kind of a manly car. You have to need a good leg to work the clutch. But I like that. I like the, I like the directness and mechanical feel of it. If I was the Porsche factory, I, I would embrace this type of thinking because it really enhances the value of their cars. I mean, you take a car that is 20 years old, that probably cost what, 60,000 back in the day? Yeah. Something like that, yeah, approximately. Yeah. And uh, you've now got something worth probably, oh, a half a million dollars. So someone could bring the 911 to you and say, you know, um, I can't afford this, I can't afford that, but I'd like this. And you can modify the car to them? Or do you have to do the whole car? 
we kind of have to do the whole car. Yeah. Um, and there, there's, we're, we're, we know how to do one thing. Yeah. And the stuff that we don't know how to do, we're not very good at. Right. So, <laughs> you know, we spent, we, we spent five years trying to do one thing really well. And, yeah, and, I mean, the nightmare is that uh, somebody buys two or three pieces and then says, oh, yes, Singer converted my, yes. yeah. and, and someone else drives and goes, well, this isn't very good. No, exactly, feel exactly. So we, we, we want to try and have You've our You've got to protect the brand, yeah. yeah. You know, enjoying a car is all about how it makes you feel. Uh, it's like, I love my Lamborghini Espada. It's my favorite Lamborghini to drive. I don't know why, there's something about it that makes me feel good. And it's the same thing with this car. It feels incredibly tight, incredibly light. You know, there's a movie called The Incredible Lightness of Being. I never really saw the movie or knew what it was about. I just love the title. Yeah. And, and that kind of thinking applies here. Yeah. Much like the Lotus Elan we built, much like Colin Chapman, it really is about taking weight out. I mean, a Bugatti Veyron weighs two and a half tons, and it has a thousand horsepower, but it, it doesn't feel light or nimble. Sure. And you know, it's all about power to weight ratio. This is 350 horsepower. It doesn't sound like much these days. When you take off 500 or 1,000 pounds, it's actually 500 horsepower in a normal car. Yep. And you put a six-speed box in it. What did it have originally? Five-speed? Five, yeah. yeah. So we put the six-speed Getrag box yeah, from, the, yeah. uh, from the 993 model. And this has oh, got okay. uh, sort of motorsport ring and pinion in it. It's got uh, close ratio gear sets and a, a, a proper motorsport uh, limited, limited slip. with 911s is one of those iconic elements of the 911 that's been written about for years and years and years is the steering yeah so we we we, we because we put these big wheels and tires on the, on the car we 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 spent a lot of time trying to get the steering delicate right. again like the 356 steering and, um, we're very proud of the steering and, the, and particularly the gear change in terms of its tactile uh, feel the fun thing about this car is it's very enjoyable at normal road speeds and maybe five or 10 miles an hour over road speed. There are a lot of high performance cars, unless you're going really fast, you don't really get the sensation of speed or you don't, they're not fun because this, you get so much road feel through this car. You can feel it coming through your uh, buttocks as they say. And uh, I know this has the race suspension on it, but it's actually quite comfortable. I don't find it jarring at all. It's a, I think it's a good compromise. Yeah. And needless to say, you run on normal pump gas, correct? Yep, 91. Yeah. That's when I built my own little hot rod, 911, and that led to this. So I just love this town. Love yeah. it. You know Magnus Walker? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I watched that show, it's a good show. Yeah. Magnus is great. I mean, he's just great. He's like a he's like a he's like a one-man marketing machine. <laughs> and he builds nice cars. Uh, yeah. You know, we haven't even been out of third gear in this thing. Let's take it up with a freeway. Here. Let's save this moment for a second here. It's hard to convey the level of detail. You know, if you're the type of person that enjoys reading the Lord's Prayer on the head of a pin, you, you get this. You sort of get what it's about. It's a matter of, he said, you know, there were four, easily 4,000 hours in this car. Now, 350,000 times 4,000 hours, that's not that much per hour. You know, nobody's getting rich doing this. This is a labor of love by people who love 911s and love what they stand for and what they represent. And what they've done here is taken a 911 and made it bigger, stronger, faster. Uh, it's, it's, it's pretty amazing. Um, I, I, I am so impressed by what they've done. 
and just how nice it feels. You know, I find myself, we were talking while driving, and my hand and my feet and everything is, and everything is just, I've only been in this car once, but it becomes second nature. You just, you adapt to it. You know, there's so many modern cars that get in and it just, you just don't take to it like you do this. So I just want to say, Rob and the guys at Singer, amazing job. Thank, Thank you. you very, very much. Thank and, you. Uh, you know, if you've got one of these cars, well, you can dream or sell your house, get rid of your house, have them do the car. Believe me, you, you can sleep anywhere. This, this is a drive. See you next week. Mm-hmm. <laughs>